MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church.
Friends, going to invite you to be seated as we begin worship this morning a little differently than we traditionally begin worship because we have all been affected by the events of Colorado this week. And so we join our hearts and our minds with those folks from around this country and around this world who are praying with and for uh, our friends in Colorado, in Denver, for those who lost their lives, and to remind ourselves how precious life is. And so I begin this worship service by joining our hearts and our minds in this congregation and around the world and give God thanks for the prayer that was sent to me this week by Daryl, and I want to share that with you. So let us pray. Thank you, great mystery, for this opportunity to wake up this day. Let the loss of those lives mean something to us. Let this loss wake us up to what we are doing, what we are becoming, to what we create and promote and allow by turning our eyes from the sadness and rage, suffering and fear in our world. Too many of our sisters and brothers have lived in this way for too long, overseas, down the street, behind closed doors, and whether this violence is inflicted by suffering, sickened individuals, institutions, corporations, religious groups, or governments. We are dying, great mystery, and many of those who are not dying are growing numb. Let us, all of us, wake up now to the horror of a suffering world without being overcome by that suffering. Let it crack open the shells around our hearts and move us to pray in the night and love in the day. Let us find in ourselves a capacity to hold suffering and own our own sisters and brothers with uncompromising presence and an unrelenting determination to love and protect every life. Help us to believe that our gestures of loving mean something and not miss a chance to love even more. Don't let us fall asleep again, great mystery. We don't want another person to lose their life ever again. So give us another chance to wake up this morning your church has wasted too many chances already and too many lives have been lost. Let the loss of these lives wake us up forever and forever. Amen. And so we do indeed hold those lives precious in our hearts and in our minds as we come to worship. Amen. God bless you this morning. It really is a joy to welcome you to worship on this glorious sunny day and the first time in our new building that we've had to contend with uh, road closures and uh, you did pretty well. I understand that one of our parking lots was closed this morning so um, hopefully you found your way to the other parking lots and if you didn't and you didn't know we had on-site parking, uh, please do check out the website and you'll be glad to find where that parking is uh, so that we can make sure that we all get here as swiftly and as quickly as possible on a Sunday morning. It's a joy to welcome you if you're worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. We know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, uh, but we're excited and delighted that you're present with us this morning. I wonder if you'd indulge my spirit if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can see you, so that we can welcome you to worship this morning. Ushers will get to you, but please do accept this brochure and a flower as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us this morning. Uh, inside the brochure, you'll find more information about our church. You'll also find a welcome card that's designed specifically for you. Uh, later on the service, we do receive an offering, and we invite you to place those cards that ask for some personal information um, into the offering plates. Uh, those cards will come directly to me. My name is Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas. I'm the senior pastor of our congregation. But along with every single person that surrounds you in this church this morning, we truly believe that we are the hands and the feet and the heart and the mouth and the life of Jesus Christ in this world today. So every single one of us is on a spiritual journey and on a spiritual pilgrimage. And so we are connected 
as sisters and brothers of the living God that is present with us this morning, and you are very welcome in this place. You will see that the ushers have also passed out the welcome tablet, so please do take a moment to pass those along the row. Important for us to know that you've been present, and also important for us to know how we may be able to minister effectively one with the other. Uh, so if you're in need of a member of the staff to give you a call this week uh, or to reach out to you, uh, please do let us know by checking the box, and we'll make sure that a member of staff gives you a call um, or follows up with you as swiftly as possible. Of course, we don't want any one of you to leave this morning without knowing that you are loved and that you are cared for. So if you're in need of uh, emergency pastoral care today, uh, please feel free to see any one of us that served on the dais this morning, and we'll be more than pleased to spend a few moments with you and then to follow up with you in the coming days and the coming weeks. But you really are welcome, and we are delighted that you are present. As you also came in this morning, you, the ushers would have given you your orders of worship, and inside the orders of worship are the announcements for today and for the upcoming weeks. Uh, not everything that we get to do as church and community is announced from the pulpit on a Sunday morning, so it really is important that you take your orders of worship home and that you mark on your own calendars the, the events and ministries that you wish to participate in and also to acknowledge how we may be able to build community not just within the walls of the church but beyond the walls of the church for part of most of our work is done every day in our everyday lives in the community in which we find ourselves. There are a few announcements that I wish to share with you this morning, so please bear with me just for a few moments as we go through those announcements. Uh, first of all, I um, would like to remind you that on a Sunday morning, our kids gather for their own kids' church. Um, it's over in the school building, which is just off the courtyard of our new premises here. Um, they are looking for some teacher assistance and for those who may have some expertise in teaching young kids. Uh, if you would like to help out with that ministry, please see either Reverend Dr. Pat this morning um, or Dean Coffey, um, who I believe is over in the, uh, in the kids' room this morning. So please uh, do avail yourself of that ministry. Um, August is our annual backpack drive, and you'll see that already things have started to arrive for our kids that are going back to school. Uh, we're very grateful to so many of you who bring in backpacks uh, and who enable us to make sure that all kids, the underprivileged uh, kids, go back to school uh, with exactly the same things that every other child goes back to school. Uh, most of our backpacks go to kids that are living um, in domestic violence shelters, um, and so we really are reaching out to the young ones who have the most need. And uh, we're so grateful for all that you are bringing in. Um, I was told this morning that Rite Aid, uh, which is right across the street from the Bank of America, uh, although there's Rite Aids all over the place, um, this week are doing two backpacks for the price of one. So um, if you're looking for a deal this week, I don't usually advertise uh, from the pulpit. Um, but uh, in, in the UK, we would call that bog off. Uh, buy one, get one free, um, and uh, you can go to Rite Aid this week, and I, I'll phone them and tell them that we're coming in, and I might get a cut uh, on my next prescription. So um, please uh, do avail yourself um, of the backpacks. But please, let's just give thanks to all those who have already brought those backpacks in. Uh, the tribe, our young adults group, are bringing the picnic inside today, which is probably a good thing with the uh, temperature outside this week, uh, but they are bringing the picnic inside. Uh, if you are 30-ish uh, or under and would like to join our young adults group, 30-ish, uh, every time I get a little bit older, I keep moving the age up, uh, but uh, there will be a picnic in the Ryland room, which is directly behind the sanctuary um, after worship at about one o'clock this morning. Our uh, Filipino group are gathering this uh, coming week for the message in 4G, God's grace is given through the gospel. It's our uh, bi-weekly Bible study in both Tagalog and in English, and they will be meeting at the Franklin campus. Uh, the Franklin campus is our um, old building, which is on Franklin and Kenmore. Uh, we still own the building, and uh, so we will be meeting there, 4G. Um, and we have usually between 50 and 70 uh, folks who gather for that Bible study on a Tuesday night, and we're so grateful to the leadership uh, of our own congregation who continue to reach out to uh, those who are uh, living in the U.S. or who have been born here and who speak Tagalog and want to have Bible study in Tagalog, just as we do uh, at 1.30 with our Spanish-speaking congregation, we continue to meet the needs of those in our community. So please join with them. Uh, snacks at 7.15, uh, and snacks usually means a big Filipino meal, um, and, then, uh, and, and then Bible study at 7.30. 
We continue to reach out to our seniors in our community, and this coming Thursday, our Community Connections is at the Gay Lesbian Elder Housing Association at Triangle Square. Um, they will be gathering there for game night. It's a way in which we ensure that our seniors uh, not only see folks from the community, uh, but also keep their, their minds active. Um, and they usually beat every single one of us at uh, Scrabble and Monopoly and Canasta and all of those wonderful games that they get to play. Uh, if you would like to join that ministry, you can see Tori this morning. Um, he'll be in the courtyard following worship and we'll be pleased to welcome you uh, to help out with the community connections at uh, Triangle Square this coming Thursday at seven. Uh, we join with members of Congregation Colomy uh, and also with the uh, Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles as we reach out in that way. Next Sunday, after the 11 o'clock service, is our uh, regular newcomers reception. If you're new to our congregation, um, or if you've been coming for the last few weeks or so, uh, and wish to find out more about this local church, meet the staff and key leaders within the congregation, uh, we invite you next Sunday at 1 o'clock to meet us in the Ryland Room, again, directly behind the sanctuary, uh, and come and meet the staff and to uh, ask whatever questions uh, you may have about who we are and what we are and what we are doing, our mission, our vision, our values. Um, and we encourage you to come and join us next Sunday. I can't believe we're announcing this, but I said this at the 9 o'clock service. We are uh, having our end of summer beach party coming up, um, and which is very strange because, of course, there is no end of summer in Los Angeles. It's just one continual summer. Um, but we will be observing the seasons with our end of uh, summer beach party at Doc Viola State Beach. Um, it's a family gathering and potluck, and that is on, um, I don't see the date here, but I think it's in August, uh, but we are inviting you to come and share with us. Look in your bulletin for more information. Jose Narciso is a faithful member of our HopeNet ministry, which uh, on a Saturday morning here in our own church building uh, feeds about 100 families uh, from the local community. Uh, they come in. Last week, if you remember, I talked about the abundance of cucumbers that we had uh, last week, and um, many of us benefited from the abundance of cucumbers. I saw people leaving with an abundance of cucumbers last week. Um, well, they are uh, fundraising, as always, to make sure that our food bank is as full as possible. Uh, this week, there was an abundance of Yople yogurt, um, or yogurt, as you say. Um, and uh, this was a wonderful, wonderful abundance. Unfortunately, there are none left. Those all went. There were cucumbers last week, but the Yople yogurt did go. Uh, we are looking for volunteers to help us staff our food bank, uh, both on Fridays and on Saturdays. Um, if you would like to participate in that ministry, uh, you can see Carol Schuffenberg this morning. Uh, Carol is here and is another faithful supporter of our food bank. So you see, folks, we get to do so many things that benefit our community and benefit this neighborhood that we find ourselves in. And we do that because we believe that the God who gives us ministry is the God who is with us as we worship. So I'm going to invite us all as we gather together, as we remind ourselves of what there is yet to do, but also of this very present moment, just to turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome. Let's affirm we're in the right place this morning. God bless you. Our scripture reading this morning comes from, the, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11 and 27 through 31, and we're using the translation, The Message. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everybody else did it? It's different in this life. 
God wants us to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well we can. For instance, by using your heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be damned. Nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is God, without the insight of the Holy Spirit. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God who decides who gets what and when. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in the church, which is Christ's body, apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, healers, helpers, organizers, those who pray in tongues. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic, undimensional part. It's not all apostle, not all prophet, not all miracle worker, not all healer, not all prayer in tongues, not all interpreter of tongues. And, and yet some of you keep competing for so-called important parts. But now I want to lay out a far better way for you. Hear what the Spirit says today.
Okay, so I see my preaching pool is a little less than I'm used to. So I'll try to keep within the bounds of my space. Um, aren't these fans adorable? You know, I have a little story to tell you before I preach this morning about these fans. So, you know, we moved into the building and we were guaranteed by the uh, former congregation that it never gets hot in here, that, um, you know, it always stays cool. And so we believed them because that was, you know, what you do. And, uh, of course, within a few weeks of us being here, we realized that actually it gets a little warmer than we thought. So um, we got online, and um, those of you who are you know, traditionally Baptists who know these fans, uh, so we got online to a, a Baptist supplier, and we tried to find some fans that would be used. And you know, of course, my African-American sisters and brothers said, you know, you've got to get them with you know, a funeral home on the back, <laughs> you know, because that's what you do. You know, so, um, so you know, it was... But I knew we didn't have time to do that because it was really important to get these fans in. And so I went online and uh, Reverend Pat actually found this supplier um, that had like a rainbow on and, uh, you know, with scriptures. And we thought that would be very appropriate for this congregation. So I phoned the supplier and I said, uh, you know, I would like to uh, have a look at the fans. And, um, but I, I realized that there were some scriptures on the fans. And so I asked them if they would send me um, the list of scriptures that were under each name. And I assumed that I could order, you know, so many of each one. Um, and so they sent me the scriptures, and I looked at them, and I thought, well, there's a couple there that are a little, you know, a little male-dominated. Um, and so I, I phoned back, and I said, you know, I wonder if I could order this one, this one, this one, and this one. And the lady on the end of the phone said, um, well, actually, you know, we don't sell them just in batches. You would just send you a whole stock, and then you have to sort out what's in there. And she said, but which congregation are you? <laughs> and it's like, you know, oh, here we go. So, you know, I said... Um, <laughs> So I said, well, Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles. She said, MCC? I said, yes. And, you know, and I, I'm used to, you know, people thinking that's the Mennonite Christian College or something else, you know. <laughs> so, um, so I said, yeah, it's, it's uh, MCCLA. And she said, oh, my God. And I said, why do you know of us? She said, yeah, I, I grew up uh, in MCC, uh, brought up by her two moms um, in the congregation in Minnesota. And uh, she was now living with her husband in Austin, which is where we got these fans from. And she said to me, she said, I totally understand why you don't want some of the fans that we have with some of the male-dominated <laughs> language on. She said, but, you know, I don't know if we can actually sort them for you. We're just going to have to send them to you. So there's this one fan that says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and has made the Lord his image and confidence. So for those of us who find this one a little offensive... Uh, just cross out man, put woman. Um, cross out his, put her. Um, or if you really don't like this one, tear it up, throw it away, and we'll replace it with something else. Um, but I just want you to know that we didn't choose this one deliberately to offend anybody. Um, but uh, it really is. But it's great. It works. <laughs> Amen. And if any of you have you know, an undertaker or someone that would like to sponsor these fans, um, you know, please let me know. It will help out. Let's pray together. God, you are so good. Your love endures forever. And we're thankful this morning for that love and for that grace, for your abundance that continues to pour itself into our lives. We're thankful, God, this morning that we can even wave a fan. We're thankful that we woke up this morning. We're grateful, God, that you've brought us to this place. We're thankful, God, for the friends that we make in this place. But more than all of that, God, we're, we're thankful for that abundant spirit that rests within us and calls us to be of service to the world. So we come to church, not to be told how to live, not to be told what to believe, but we come to church to be in fellowship with, with one another, to learn from one another, to be models to one another, and to allow your spirit to speak to us individually in that relationship that you call us to have with you so that we may live lives in abundance and in accordance to your will for each and every one of us. So now as we've prayed, as we've laughed, as we have shared our stories together, now still our hearts. Open us to your spirit so that spirit can speak to us. And in that, not only speak to us, but guide us in the ways of life. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the living Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. 
So a couple of weeks ago, I began a sermon series called Keys to Abundance. And over the last few weeks and in the few weeks to come, we'll be talking about the abundance that we are called to have in our lives. Uh, The abundance that is according to Scripture, a gift that is given to each and every one of us. It's not something we earn. It's not something that we beg for. It is something that is given. Indeed, the gifts of God are given to all of God's people, and we heard that echoed in the scripture we heard this morning from Paul's letter to the early church at Corinth, where he talks about those gifts that have been made manifest in people's lives, and whether we think that those gifts have been manifest because of God-given or natural ability or however it is that we find those gifts within our lives, those gifts are given to us by an over-generous and abundant God who just wants to continually lavish good things upon us. And sometimes it's hard for us to accept that there is this good God who wants to lavish good things upon us. And it's hard for us to understand that because so often the God that we've heard of from our tradition or the God that we've heard of in the news or the God that sometimes we've heard from pulpits is not this generous God but a vengeful God, a God who is unloving, a God that is unkind. And I think that we've seen that manifest in the world, especially today. I couldn't help but think about over this last uh, week uh, of the events on Thursday night, Friday morning in Denver, Colorado, where the young man in his 20s walked into the uh, theater and shot arbitrarily human life. Children as young as seven, adults, old enough, but who lost their lives that night. I don't think any one of them thought that they would go to a theater or to a movie house and that this would be the last day of their life. Many of us don't expect that to happen. But this morning, as we reflect upon that, and as I reflected upon that in the events of that day, I started to think to myself about this gift that God gives us, this gift of life. This life that each and every one of us so often takes for granted. But this life also that many of us are in evolving into. Especially those of us who come from a place of oppression or from a place where we are struggling in our own lives. How do we find this gift of life today in this key to abundance? And how do we ensure that the key to abundance that God gives to us is not just lived out um, in the world, but is lived out in the theology of the church? Because the reality is the theology of the church has to take some responsibility for the tragedies that happen in human life. You know, especially I, I'm, one of the things I've noticed about here in the United States, and, and it's not a, this is not a criticism, uh, it's not a, a, a statement about American culture. Well, it may be, Um, but it's certainly different from my experience growing up in the UK. My experience in the UK was that religion, although it was pretty evident, you know, we live in a a church and state linked society, but growing up in the United Kingdom, there seemed to be more fluidity to faith, more fluidity to the experience of faith. Uh, Indeed, although faith is woven into the fabric of society, Many of us usually only go to church for three reasons. To be hatched, matched, or dispatched. <laughs> for christenings, for weddings, or for funerals. And we, 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 there are some of us who go more often, um, but the reality is that religion in the UK uh, and in much of Europe um, is not only dying, but is far more, I think, diverse and far more inclusive. Now, those things are changing. And many of those things are changing because of the influence of the American evangelists that are moving into the United Kingdom um, or moving into other parts around the world, into Africa and to other places. And I believe are bringing with them or taking with them some of the toxic religion, not the Christian religion, but the toxic religion that many of us grew up on. That kind of toxic religion that I believe very clearly misrepresents God and describes God as this vengeful, hateful, unloving parent, this unloving God. And I know that that's true because I sit with so many of you and listen to your stories. One of the great joys that I have as pastor is listening to your stories of your lives. Many of you who have come through the early church or your own early church experience, and through that experience has come to believe 
that the God that is all loving and all caring and all wonderful and all good that we sing about on a Sunday morning is not lived out in the theology, certainly not the theology from the pulpit. That the theology from the pulpit is a God that has favorites, a God who likes some and doesn't like others. And it's a very sad reflection that that is the theology that many of us have grown up with because many of us are still working out that theology in our adult lives. We're working out that theology about how can I really love myself when I've been told over and over again that God doesn't love me? You know, how can I live out this abundance of life when I've been taught that I'm not even worthy of eating from the crumbs that fall from the table of Jesus? And how can I really believe in this God when where perhaps I'm still struggling with uh, I think tapes that are going on in my own head of feelings of unworthiness, of feelings of inadequacies, of feeling of lack of, rather than this abundance that we get to preach of on a Sunday morning? How do I live that out in reality? And I have to say that for those of us who grew up in that kind of environment, it's hard. And leads, I think, to some destructive behaviors in our lives. And certainly not behaviors that are wholesome. And certainly not behaviors that lead us into this abundance of life. You know, this morning we're celebrating with Crystal Bowls 24 years of sobriety. And we are so grateful. You know, we know from Crystal's story that it's a day-by-day experience. Some of us have heard her life story. And, you know, Crystal would be the first to say she's not perfect. In fact, many of us would be the first to say she's not perfect. (laughs) I have a list of people who would say that. But, you know... But the the reality is that in this appreciation for who Crystal is, that we get to celebrate her birthday today with everything that she is, the good, the not so good, all of the things that make up Crystal, we get to celebrate because she's a divine child of a living God who is loved beyond all that we could think of. You see, that's, that's, the, that's the gospel message. That is at the very core of the gospel message, a gospel message that each and every one of us, no matter where we are on our journey, no matter where we've been or where we're going, it, that, that's not the important piece. The important piece is that this abundance that we get from this God of grace, this God that we say God is good all the time, all the time God is good, rests within each and every one of us no matter where we are on our journey. And just as those gifts were given to the early apostles and given to the early church and were given to Paul and were given to the folks at Corinth and given to the Romans and given to all who decided to follow in the ways of Jesus, those gifts are still given to us today. And we get to choose whether we're going to live from that place of abundance, from those gifts, or whether we're going to get to live from the place of destruction or whether we're gonna choose to live from a place of scarcity. And I think in our world today, many of us are living from a place of scarcity. We're living from a place of we don't have enough. And I understand that in a time of recession. I understand that because some of our theology as a church has said that, that abundance comes in the shape of money. And that somehow in this prosperity preaching dialogue that we've had in the last 40 years from the church says that if you have an abundance of money, then somehow God must be blessing you. And then in this time of recession, we have to ask ourselves, when we don't have enough, does that mean that God somehow is displeased with me? And our focus of theology has been more about money and more about accumulating more and more money than it has been about our own spiritual gifts and our own spiritual giftedness and our own knowledge of who God has made us to be and how abundant that gift is. You know, I look around our church week in and week out and I see the abundance of the gifts that we have in this place. And I also see the folks who are willing to share those gifts with one another. You see, I think the key to abundance is not what we have, but more about what we are willing to give away. 
The key to abundance is how much more we are willing to share with one another. Because I truly believe in a God who will fill us up over and over again multiple times if we're willing just to empty ourselves over and over again. I used this uh, symbol at the nine o'clock service of the, uh, the teapot. And uh, you know, that you, in order to get tea out of the teapot, you need to pour hot water in. And that the more you pour it out, the more you can pour in. It's like the ever, ever, never ending cup that we serve here in the United States. And uh, I'll just do this because I've got to get it out of my system. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. <laughs> here's my handle, here's my. Oh my God, it must be a sugar bowl. <laughs> Okay, that, that, has, that has nothing to do with my sermon. But it was, it, it was running around in my head and I just had to get it out. So, um, yeah, so Master Skip says, okay, now it's out, move on. So, um, but we live so much from this place of scarcity. Oh, good, I'm glad the choir got it. Instead of this abundance, this abundant grace, this abundant love, this abundant blessing that we get to be given, not because we've earned it, not because somehow we have proven ourselves, just, but, but just because we've made the decision to be a follower of Jesus, Amen. to live as Jesus would have us live. And that that abundance is a key to our healthy and whole living that instead of living from a place of scared or fear or from a place of not believing or a place of, of scarcity, we get to choose this morning to live from a place of abundance, a place that says that, that in order for me to receive more, I need to give more, that, that in order for me to be filled up over and over again, I've got to let some of it out. Because if you don't let some of it out, how much more can be filled up? And, and quite honestly, the stuff that's just in our lives or just those gifts that are not being exercised in the world get stale if we don't let them out and allow God to refresh them and to renew them and to evolve them within our lives. And that those gifts that God has given to us this morning are gifts that we are called to freely share. And it's the key, the key to abundance is by allowing the gifts not only to be made manifest in us, not just to let them be, but to find ways in which we can share them one with the other. The gift of love, the gift of grace, the gift of forgiving one another when we hurt one another, the gift of knowing that if we slip in our sobriety that there is another day that we can start all over again. A gift that says in our relationships and in our church and in our community and in our world, that we get to share just who we are, the authentic self. Not, not the church plastic self that we, get to, that we think we're going to show on a Sunday morning. But that complete whole self, the good, the not so good, all of those things we get to share with one another from this God of grace who just wants to lavish good gifts upon us. Because the reality is that the reason why I don't think we live in that place is because we haven't yet come to terms with the fact that we are beautiful just the way that we are. That we are amazing just the way that we are. That we are fabulous just the way that we are. And I think our first key to abundance is acknowledging that's who we are. That's God who made us to be. That's who God wants us to be. That is who God desires for us to be best thing that we possibly can be from the giftedness that God has made present in all of us. I wish I could wave a magic wand upon culture and upon society, upon all of us this morning so that we might just once for one second all believe that we are just fabulous. And from that place, perhaps then we could make decisions in our lives from our giftedness that will enable us to make the radical change, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of the world, in the lives of this community, in the lives of those that we love, in the lives of those that we touch, that they too could affirm and know within their own lives that they too are fabulous, created in God's divine image, to have an abundance of God's goodness living within them 
and pouring out of them so that the world might be changed, so that there would be no more Denver, Colorado experiences, where from a place I believe of self-hatred, of feeling like a failure, he didn't know what else to do. Or, or our youth who are coming out as LGBT and when they go back to school are being picked on and bullied and so they jump from rooftops because they don't know how to love themselves. Or for our transgender congregation members who are still reconciling and evolving who they are as individuals and even within our society continue to be told that they are second class, not good enough. Friends, this is the good news of the keys to abundance, is that we get this morning to affirm every life in this church, no matter where we've come from or no matter where we're going, but that we get to affirm every life this morning for the giftedness that you are. And in that giftedness, there is so much for us to share and so much for us to give. That's good news. And that's news that should be preached from every pulpit, in every church, in every congregation, regardless of denomination and regardless of religious affiliation. For once and for all to make God's people feel that they are worth something and not worth nothing. That is good news. That's what Jesus came to preach 2,000 years ago. So I leave you with the message. Know your worthiness. Know who you are as a divine child of God. Know that you have been given gifts. No matter what they are, they're given to you and they've been given to me. And that the cause of the church is to bring us together so that those gifts might be exercised and lived out, shared with one another and beyond these walls so that the world will be a better place. Because ultimately, we get to live in that better world. And so we get to benefit as well. May God bless us. And may God just use this moment. I wish sometimes I could get that little tape recorder and push that record button and just help us record this over and over again so we can get it into our heads. That we're divine, loved children of God who wants only good things for God's children. May we take our key this morning, put it in the lock, and unlock for ourselves the keys to abundance. It begins with you. Let us pray. God, help us to know our giftedness this morning. Help us to know that you are with us and that you are for us. And if you are for us, then there is nothing that can stand against us. Help us this morning to realize that we live in a world that has been attacked, if you will, by toxic theology that makes many peoples feel less than. And yet your word stands on the promise of just how amazing we are, how good we are. Even at the very beginning of creation, you made us in your image and you said you are tove, tove, good, very good. And somehow along the way, that belief, how you created us, has been eradicated from our system. It's time for us, God, to stand up and to put it back into the system, to put it back into the theology, and to live from a place of abundance of God's grace and God's love and God's joy in each and every one of us. So that in that belief, from the very inside out, the gifts that you have given to us can be exercised in the world to the benefit of the world and to the benefit of of each and every one of us. So God, I pray that we might believe this morning. And in our belief, help us to live from that place so that it begins with us and like the ripples of the water, goes out to transform the world. 
Now, God, I pray that you would take the words that have come from my mouth and allow them to return to you without watering us, inspiring us, challenging us, and calling us to live in the ways of godliness. To the honor and glory of the one who gave this message this morning, Jesus, the living Christ. Amen. So each and every Sunday we get to give from our abundance. We get to give of it in the way of our talent, sharing with one another. We get to give it through our treasure, through the offerings that we make. And we get to give it through the time that we offer, through sharing with each other in fellowship or in friendship, listening to one another. So many ways in which we are able to give. And so this morning we invite you to give of your offering knowing that we can do so much more when we pull our resources together in time, in talent, and in treasure. And this morning there will be a second offering that you may be able to offer this morning to three programs within our church, our Paul Gromberg Benevolence Fund, our Brown Bag Sunday Lunch Program, and our HopeNet Food Pantry. And if you would like to designate 
specifically to any one of those three programs, you can do that by signaling it on the envelope in the memo section. But we give from an abundance, not from scarcity, from giving from the abundance of our time, our talent, and our treasure this morning. So would you pray with me on this offering? God, we thank you for that which you have afforded for us this morning to give to the ministry of the church. We thank you that we get to give this morning so that we can do so much more together, for we know that when we pool our resources together, that we can do so much more than any single one of us can do on our own. And so when someone is fed, when someone is listened to, even though we may not be able to be present at that very moment, we know that we have given of time, talent, and treasure to ensure that that can happen, and then spiritually we are all there together. May God therefore bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen.
from that place of standing in awe and a power greater than ourselves, let us go to God in prayer. Yes. God, we thank you for our lives. We thank you for all those who are here today. And God, we lift up to you all those people we hold dear in our hearts, all those concerns and needs that we have to give back to you today. God, we pray for our children who are near or far, who need your protection, who need your presence, who need to grow in safety, and who need to live and be grateful for the life that they receive from you. God, we pray for our parents who have gone before. We dedicate and remember Vivian Jane's mom who died last year. For the life well lived, for the inspiration she's brought to Jane, for all of our parents, and the inspiration they give us to be able to live life well and to find our way here. God, we lift up those churches who are under attack today. God, we don't really understand violence. We have been the recipients of violence. We sometimes dish it out, but we need to give it back to you, God. We need to be healed of violence. We need to lift up the churches in China who have to meet under cover of darkness. The churches in Ethiopia, Egypt, especially Nigeria, who are being killed just for being Christian. God, we lift up those folks who live in neighborhoods where it's not even safe to live. Yes. And God, sometimes these issues are so big, we don't even know what to do to help. So God, we lift up the violence within ourselves. We give it back to you. We ask that you would transform it into your grace, that when there is a moment that we should step out and speak your truth in the face of imminent violence. Let it be spoken. Let your truth divide what is right from what is wrong. And let it be peace in your name. So God, whoever was supposed to step up and stop the violence in that theater the other night, we don't know. But bless them. Bless those lives who were laid waste and their parents and their families must continue to live. God, we lift up this church as a center of your life, that life will be well lived and that we will learn to reach out to all. And those people who are most difficult for us to love in this moment are our teachers and the ways that we can love even our enemies. Even in a year of political fighting, we can love even our enemies. So God, we give it all back to you. Help us to do our part. Help us to hold up the brokenness in our lives and to allow you to transform us so that we can follow your life and pass it on. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. In a time when Jesus knew there was going to be an extreme act of violence to happen in his own life and in a time when violence was unfortunately probably even more common, more blatant than it is today here. He took a moment, he took a moment to be with his friends and his followers and to say, let's share a meal. It wasn't just any meal, it was a Seder supper, it was a meal of liberation, it was a meal that reminded the Jewish people, even to this day, of God's greatness and God's ability to lead people to freedom. And it was at the end of that meal when Jesus took the afikomen, it took the dessert of the meal, and he raised it and blessed it and broke it shared it with all who were gathered there. Here, take and eat of this. This is my body, which will be broken for you. I ask that you continue to not only eat of it in this moment, but in moments to come, and when you do so, do so to remember me. 
and in a similar fashion, he took a cup. A cup, some say, was the Elijah cup, a cup to be touched by no one but by, but by the Messiah, and he did. He raised it, and he asked blessings upon it, and he shared it with all who were gathered as it is shared with you and with me this day. Here, take and drink fully from this cup, for into this cup is poured forth my blood, my life essence, all of who I am. Drink fully from this, for indeed it is a promise that your sins shall be forgiven. Friends, when we do this in remembrance of Jesus, when we take within us into every fiber of our being the presence of Jesus, we are reminded we are divine children of God. If we allow that presence of Christ to dwell within us, can sin no more, for we are in unison with the God who created us, saves us, and lives with us this day. So God, we bless this sacrament that we freely receive, and in the name of those whose blood has been spilled in Syria, in Hollywood, the transgendered of the world, in Colorado. God, we bless this, and we are so grateful that you have left this meal for us, for us to be transformed, for us to be made whole, for us to live in love and in life. We bless these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Friends, here at Metropolitan Community Church, as with all MCCs around the world, we share and we celebrate an open communion. That means you need not be a member of this church or of any church to come forward and take part in this meal. We simply ask that you come seeking. In a moment, the ushers will guide us down the aisle to stations in the front and as well as in the balcony. And it's our tradition here to take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself. And then we share a brief blessing with you. If you would like one or the other, let us know so that we might fully serve you. I invite you to come by yourself with your friends, your family, significant others, significant others, those who you would like to share this feast with today. There are no barriers except the ones we put up. So if you would like to come, please do. If you'd like to stay where you're at, that's great. God finds you. So we will not be alone. Let's allow ourselves to keep this feast one with the other. May the ushers guide us and the servers and acolytes please join.
abundance. Yes. That each and every one of us is a gift. Yes. Each and every one of us has a gift to share. Mm -hmm. And indeed, each and every one of us can only receive more of the gifts of God if we are willing to empty ourselves so that more can be given. It's the key to abundance in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I invite us all on this journey yeah. to discover it for ourselves mm -hmm. and to live life to the very fullest. For as we have learned this week, not one of us knows when it might come to an end. Let's join then in friendship and fellowship with one another as we close worship in song. today in honor and memory to a member of our congregation's papa who loved me the day I was born and loves me unconditionally until his last breath. And hospitality today is sponsored by the choir. And if you would like to dedicate flowers at the altar or sponsor our fellowship hour, please contact the church office and they'll be glad to make the dedication in the orders of worship. And thanks very much to Roger Owens, who took us down yes. to San Diego yes. yesterday. <laughs> who, more importantly, got us all back yesterday. Um, and uh, the first time in any gay pride that service men and women were able to march yes. in uniform yes. Yes. here in the United States. Now unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God, known as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Peace. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Namaste. Namaste. And as our Muslim friends begin the season of Ramadan, as-salam. 
Amen. Amen. Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people. you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 